Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Making a video for one of my co subscribers, Tom the Frugal Prepper. Who, as you get by his name, he's a prepper. He makes lots of stuff for himself. He repairs lots of stuff for himself. He does lots of stuff for himself. And he posted a video reviewing an electric chainsaw, which I was interested in because, you know, if I've got an electric chainsaw, I wouldn't be quite so reliant on burning fossils to get myself some firewood. And as you can see, I've almost let myself run out of firewood because running out of firewood's like mixing concrete. It's a very effective white man's rain dance. It's raining. But anyway, back to Tom and his electric chainsaw review. At about one minute and 30 seconds in there, I nearly choked on the coffee because he mentioned he was going to start by changing the chain. And he said he knew that some people say they sharpen chainsaws, but he's tried it and a, a filed chain never works as well as one that's new. So therefore, he buys chains, I think $6 each, or might be $6 for a packet of two. And he uses the chain until it's blunt and he throws them away because it costs $10 to have them professionally sharpened. Which, if you were cutting firewood around here, would sometimes mean that you get less than a minute out of each chain because quite often old hollow logs that are dry enough to burn will be full of mud and the mud will have silicon crystals in it because serrated tussock has so much silicon in the leaves that grinds down the teeth on cattle and sheep so the native plant is declared a noxious feral pest. Point is chainsaws go blunt pretty quick when you're cutting Australian hardwood in a forest. Okay, well, one chain, $35 is what I'm used to paying. And the saw has run 312 hours. And I get sort of 25 hours to a chain. Perhaps 50. And my big bar, the 36 inch 115 tooth bar, which chainsaw milled all this flat square timber it is pretty much on its last legs and it would have done maybe 75 hours of milling so I find that you can sharpen a chainsaw with a file though I didn't always do so when the old man died when I was 21, I inherited two chainsaws and a cardboard box full of bits. And in among the bits, there was something very similar to this, not actually this because it finally died and burnt its motor out, but it's supposed to be for sharpening chainsaws. It's kind of a lot like a Dremel. And what you're supposed to do is set the depth so that when you plop it in there, you can then just grind gently that little edge and by changing the polarity you can organize to have the stone turning away from the cutting edge so you just grind all the teeth on one side change your jumper leads on the car battery and grind all the teeth on the other side and as your little stone wears away and gets smaller and smaller there gets to be a greater and greater difference between the circumference of the stone and the desired profile of the cutter. So the older your stone gets, the worse your sharpening job gets. However, you can get pretty good at uh, sort of feather touching your cutting edges by hand and for, I don't know, probably 15 years or something, that's how I sharpened my chainsaw. Then I took my 14 year old son to a rural fire service chainsaw cross cutting course and everybody else there was using files and the doctrine was you had to use a file and I tried to make a brave stand saying oh yeah but you know like surely you can use one of them and they just said yeah but on the fire ground if you hit a rock you might not have one of them and if all you got is a file you have to know how to use a file so muggins you learn to use a file. It turns out it's not actually that hard. 
is really only a few tips and tricks. One, get one of these things, a filing guide, which will set the correct depth, providing you get the right file and the right guide to match your train. This is a 3.8 guide and a 3.8 file and a 3.8 chain. In theory, Mr. Dolmer thinks that you can also use a one of them. And using it that way, you apparently get the uh, alignment of your file off the slope on that inside edge of the hook. While this guides you in filing down the depth gauge, because these depth gauges set how far the cutter can bite into the wood. And if you sharpen your teeth down to the point where the depth gauge sticks up higher than the leading edge of the tooth, you're going to polish your way through the wood rather than cut. So, correct file, correct file guide to match the chain. Doesn't really matter what your handle is, as you can see, I cobbled that up from a bit of off-cut wood. You can try and use one of them if you have to, but personally, I'd rather do it without anything than use that. These days I use this thing to grind down the depth gauges, by eye, by hand, unguided. It works. Okay, kind of difficult to do good work if the saw's jumping around, so I put it on a bench and I just gently locate the handle in the vise. It stops the saw from wriggling around. Okay, so we're only going for the front edge and I'm going to be honest with you, this chain doesn't need sharpening because I didn't hit a rock last time. So we'll fill her up with oil. And yes, I use secondhand sump oil. Bear in mind, using sump oil, this chain, 2016, June, three and a half years old, 264 hours, 10 minutes, 312 hours. 42 hours cutting hardwood on sump oil. Doesn't seem to have done much damage. So anyway, we'll let that sit and warm up while I get dressed in me Kevlar cowboy chainsawing chaps and me proper chainsawing hat, leaving the goggles behind. We'll cut up a little bit of yellow box, followed by some wattle. And ideally, we should be able to put a little bit of patterner on the chain. 29 years air dry. firewood and dry firewood 
two different species, composite firewood technology, under two separate wheelbarrows. Right, now back to the chain. Grab the granny goggles, ditch the funny hat. Okay, so there were two ground strikes and one of them struck a spark in that little load. That tooth there will be the one that sparked. There it is again from this side. Following tooth's got a little bit of a ding on it. These other ones have also got dings. But that's, that's so far, that one there is the deepest ding. And basically, if you find a ding on one side and you only sharpen that one tooth on that side, or perhaps all the teeth on one side, if you've hit a rock with one side of your chain, the next time you go to cut, the chain will not cut straight because you're going to have different heights and different sharpnesses. So you find the deepest ding and you try very hard to get it as good as you can within one or two or three strokes of the, stro of the file because to keep everything cutting straight, as deep as you take this tooth, you have to take the same amount off all the other teeth in the same sharpening. After that, it's a case of lining this guide rail or guide line up with the bar, making sure you haven't got any angle of the dangle wrong there. Get that lined up, bring it back with no pressure on, apply pressure and give it one or three decent strokes. Feel it and you, we're going to leave a little bit of marking there, but we've got a good edge. So now run around the whole bar until you come back to there and sharpen all of them with one light and two heavy strokes. So one, two, and a light one. One, two, and a light one. Line it up, bring it back. One, two, and a light one. Line it up, bring it back, one, two, and a light one. And it's just muscle memory. Okay, that tooth has been filed. That tooth has been filed. That one hasn't. And that one has. One, two, and a light one. Okay, change sides. And this time, we use this guide rail, or guide line. And uh, yeah, use the other hand to hang onto the bar. One, two, and a light one. 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 And what this does is it uses the radius of the file to set the depth and the circumference of the cutting edge and the only way to do it with a machine tool is to use the edge of a specially made grinding disc on an electric motor on a jig with everything set up for your particular chain and I can see why they charge ten dollars because there's a bit of fiddling around in setting up And if somebody hasn't got a chainsaw file and a file guide and a pretty good idea of what they're doing, it's only too easy to finish up with all the teeth on one side too high or too short or at the wrong angle or with their edges cut wrong. And yeah, you can make a mess of it, no doubt about it. But it's not actually that hard. And yeah, this is a 42 hour chain. And when I'm not cutting in the rain while making a video so I can pay a bit more attention to what the saw's doing and where the wood is, when everything goes right, I generally get sort of 15 to 45 minutes of actual engine running and cutting before I've hit enough rocks that I need to resharpen the saw. And as it was kind of foretold within the prophecy, when I cut wet wood in the rain and put the wet wood under cover, that is a switch off the rain dance. So it's now not raining as much. I wish I could say we've had that much, but actually last night, Warbles played with his new toy. 
for $185. Industrial grade, 25 millimeter Stortz fitting equipped garden sprinkler. So the bottom one millimeter of that was me using dam water and a fire pump. Because not only is there that pipeline, that's 120 meters of poly pipe, it's 110 meters from the dam from my tank to my neighbor's tank. So there you go. Ciao.